Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one, as you can see, is a new physique update from Nexilla in the magic mirror. And I gotta say, he definitely looks better than ever. Almost in the same conditioning that he had at Prague Pro. And he's uh, four weeks out of Dubai Pro. So he's definitely gonna get a lot sharper, and the one thing I'm noticing the most here is that his shape is improved, for sure. He is not the most aesthetic guy, I mean, he will never be, no matter what he does. He will never have the figure, the, the silhouette, like somebody like Behru Stabani or something like that. No, no, no. But this guy basically has no myostatin whatsoever. And whichever muscle he decides to grow, that is the muscle he grows. And if he doesn't want his neck to grow anymore and his quads and he decides that his chest, for example, and his shoulders need to grow, that's what's gonna happen and that is happening right now. I think his shoulders are definitely a lot better this year and it's definitely adding a lot to the illusion of a better X-frame, better Wii taper. So, like, his shoulders are definitely rounder, bigger. So is his chest. I don't think his legs are that dominant compared to his upper body anymore. I think his overall upper body grew. Especially shoulders, I would say arms as well. Check out this story that he posted uh, on his Instagram. So, would you say that his arms are looking uh, small? <laughs> No, no, by any means, they're definitely not small. Granted, it's a different story when he lifts them up, when he hits the front double bicep, but those arms are definitely not small, and I'm sure even the front double bicep is gonna look better this year on stage. Another thing that also adds to his aesthetics is his midsection. Like, these abs are phenomenal. Like, the side abs are very clear, very, very visible, like, very prominent. There's a good separation. His midsection is flat. You can see an 8-pack. So, like, even his waist, I mean, it's not Bekru Stabani waist, yeah, but it's not a Nick Walker waist either. And now with this new added size in, like, in shoulders, chest, arms, I would say the whole upper body, and, like, with better balance overall, damn, he is gonna look impressive on that stage. And he's doing Dubai Pro in four weeks. Is he gonna win that show? I think, yeah, I think he will. But I'm not so sure anymore because he actually is gonna have great competition at that show. I mean, Behur Stabani is doing it, Nathan Diasha and William Bonak as well are doing it, from what I heard. Maybe somebody else jumps in, I don't know. So it's gonna be like he has to be really, really on. Really on, really conditioned and improved. And he also needs to have some luck because he's going against some top guys and it's not going to be easy to beat them. I mean, he already beat Nathan Diasha. He missed Behrus Tabani last year by one show. Behrus did Romania and uh, one week later, uh, Rubil did uh, Prague Pro. And William Bonak is coming and he's looking good. But in my eyes, in my opinion, from what I saw so far, I do have Nick Zilla as the favorite at that show. Personally, I feel like he's in a different league. I feel like he is a top five bodybuilder in the world. I don't want to say Olympian because he didn't qualify yet, but that's what I think. I think he will qualify for the Mr. Olympia, and I think he can be top five, top six over there. The other guys are more like top ten material. Again, it's really difficult to say before we see these guys on stage, but even last year at his pro debut, he compared extremely well against the top guys, against Samson even. And he beat Nathan Diasha, even last year. I think he improved significantly in the meantime. And I think, I mean, he was beating Samson in some poses, I would say. Like this one, for example. I mean, you can argue that he didn't. Like, maybe his, maybe Samson's balance is better. Rubio's legs were a little bit too big. But, you know, with those abs deep like this, and with those quads super dominant, I know balance and symmetry are a criteria in judging, but I like to see freaky body parts. I like to see freaks on that stage. I like to see mass monsters. And Rubio is definitely one of the biggest guys in the world right now, if not the biggest. Probably the biggest guy. Probably the biggest bodybuilder in the world today. If he nails conditioning, and it looks like he's doing that right now, with these new improvements, I think sky's the limit for this guy. He's not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but... He is freaking phenomenal. He is freaking impressive. He is crazy looking right now. Look at this guy. This is insane. This is basically... I don't want to say new Ronnie Coleman because Ronnie, especially in his early days, he had basically perfect shape and symmetry. This guy doesn't have that. But as far as size, 
he is definitely there. He is definitely there. And I'm guessing his legs are even bigger than Ronnie's. Or at least as big. And his upper body is starting to match. So, yeah, it's gonna be hard to deny this guy. I have him placing high and doing crazy things this year. We'll see in four weeks from now. Like I said, he's gonna be facing uh, Behrus Tabani, and this is his most recent physique update. He's also four weeks out, and at this point, he's like uh, 277, something like that, almost 280. Guys, this guy is freaking big as well. I mean, <laughs> he's a little bit on the taller side, but not exactly super tall. So 280 at this conditioning, that's, that's big. That's a lot of muscle. Now, is Becruz really Rubio's biggest competition? Or is it William Bonac? Because Bonac just beat Becruz. I don't know, because I felt like Becruz was winning against Bonac. But, I don't know. Uh, these guys are very close, both of them. Uh, is Becruz gonna be able to beat Rubio, however? I mean, his strengths are Rubio's weaknesses. He has shape and conditioning. Rubio doesn't have the best shape. Maybe he can match Becker's conditioning, probably not, I don't think he can get that shredded, maybe he can get that lean, but I don't think he has the kind of detail that Becker's has, but like I said before, if Rubiel is truly on, I think he can't lose, I don't think he can lose this show. Becker's is amazing, but his biggest flaw is gonna be really noticeable when he stands next to Rubiel, his legs are gonna look like he doesn't even squat, you know what I mean, I mean, Rubiel is gonna dwarf him in that department. And then also like with overall freak factor and size. So in my opinion, as long as Rubiel is really conditioned, I think he is gonna beat Becruz, but Becruz also, with his shape and conditioning, he's definitely in contention to win that show, and that's gonna be an amazing show, crazy lineup. These four guys, as of right now, maybe somebody else too, the prize money is big. I believe it's $100,000, so a lot of guys will show up. It's gonna be a crazy show. Right now, my prediction is Rubiel wins, and then it's a battle between Becruz and William Bonac, and then I guess Nathan Diasha. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. All right, next up, we got the first and the last update of Sean Clarida, previous 212 Mr. Olympia champion and a runner up last year. And we didn't see anything from this guy this year, no physique updates, and we got a video today at 14 weeks out. So the question is, can he reclaim his title? He won it once, then he lost it, then he won it back, and then he lost it again to Keon Pearson, and now he wants to win it again. Is that possible? Can he beat Keon Pearson and reclaim his Mr. Olympia title twice? I mean, I'm pretty sure that never happened in any category. Maybe in bikini, I don't know, but as far as bodybuilding categories, I don't think so. And right now, he does look phenomenal. The biggest change that I'm seeing is the waist size. And that was the biggest criticism he received after last year's Mr. Olympia. And I think Steve Weinberger actually once said it, that the reason why he lost the Mr. Olympia was simply that. That was the only reason. It was close enough, but Sean was better than Keon, and Sean lost because he didn't control his midsection the best. So I, and I can see that, because when I was watching the live stream, I thought Sean was better. Because he was more conditioned, he had his crazy bubbly muscle everywhere, the back was insane, the lower back was diced, the glutes, the hamstrings, he was just in better condition than Keon. Yeah, he was shorter and therefore smaller, but like he was, you know, for his height, pound for pound, he was bigger, more bubbly, more round, more conditioned, so I thought he did enough. I thought he was gonna win, but then when I heard the argument about the midsection, yeah, it made sense that he lost. However, this year, I think the midsection is quite improved. And if you guys watched the Manis podcast with Matt Jensen, he actually said that this year, they didn't even push for more weight. The year before last Mr. Olympia, he actually got to his heaviest, and he was like really heavy in the offseason. This time around, they kept him lighter, you know, in really good condition, because the judges told them that he doesn't need to change anything. He was basically perfect on that stage. He just needs to control the midsection better. He doesn't need to improve a single body part. And look at his physique. What does he need to improve? I would say the lag imbalance is fixed as well. It was noticeable last year, one leg was smaller than the other, and now I don't even know which one was it, because they're looking very symmetrical. You know, upper body, like chest, shoulders, arms, everything is there, 
he's a little bit narrow in the shoulders, but his shoulders are massive themselves, so it's creating a really good illusion of width. From the side, hamstrings are hanging low, the upper body has that thickness, like he's very, very round everywhere. From behind, he I think that those are the best poses of his. Like the back is absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the best, it's one of the best physiques since Ronnie Coleman, honestly. Just a, a really small version, you know, he's really, really short. But pound for pound, if he was taller, with the same physique, he would be winning the Mr. Olympia Open easily. He's basically a mini Ronnie Coleman. Now, as far as beating Keon Pearson, that's gonna be difficult, because Keon has that perfect structure, perfect shape, and I think he improved a lot. And the funny thing is, he wasn't even close to his weight cap last year. And I think this year he also won't be, but he's gonna be heavier. So he's gonna be just overall bigger than Sean, but is he gonna be as conditioned? Because Sean is already ripped at 14 weeks out. Look at the bubbleness, the roundness. It's gonna be an epic battle. Who's gonna win <sighs> at this point? I mean, I thought Kian is gonna be unbeatable, but after seeing this from Sean, <sighs> I don't know. But one thing is for sure, both of these guys are looking crazy, and I think they're both gonna be improved for the Mr. Olympia compared to last year, so it's gonna be an epic battle. Who do you guys have winning this year? Tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more content like this about bodybuilding. Guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best, and bye-bye.